Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are with our two speakers on the Pharma Nisha 2.0 E Tech Two of the technical sessions on the pharmaceutical industries and drug discovery. Today we are having the speakers with us, Dr. Zareen Delawar Hussain, CEO and MD, Integro Pharmaceutical Limited, Bangladesh, and Mr. Mohammad Abdul Monteba, who is a chairman, Department of Pharmacy, USCC University, Chittagong, Bangladesh. So, first of all, we are going with us our eminent speaker, Dr. Jarin Delawar Hussain, who will today speak about the world pharmaceutical industry at a glance. Whatever the pharmaceutical industry in the glance they are having and what is the scenario of the world pharmaceutical industries in the overall pharmaceutical market. So today Dr. Zarin will cover the overall scenario of the pharmaceutical industry. Now I request to Dr. Zarin Delawar Hussain to continue our today's session as a keynote speaker. Over to Dr. Zarin Delawar Hussain. Uh, thank you Vikram. Thank you Open Pharmacy Federation for uh, allowing me a second day uh, opportunity to talk about the current scenario of the pharma industry in the world. Um, I do not like to give presentations as such because uh, what happens usually is uh, it becomes too much formal. I'm pretty much uh, don't want to sound very formal and I don't want anybody to uh, memorize anything or write anything. Just remember uh, two or three points from each slide. That should be it. So let me start uh, uh, from the beginning. So let's look at the world farm industry. What is the market size? The market size is 1,215.4 billion. But if you talk about um, trillion, it's 1.3 trillion USD uh, uh, in the world market. It is easy to remember 1.3 trillion. Now, who takes the chunk share of that market? America. Just remember, 50% takes America. What is the most sought after drug? Is the oncologic product, which is the market of which is, remember, just 100 billion. Now, talking about the world pharma, should we not know a little bit who are the top pharma industries are in the world? Just remember three. Number one is Roche. Number two is Pfizer. Number three is Johnson & Johnson. Next slide. I don't want you to remember everything. OK. So let's put our eyes on the, um, on the screen. So what are the world top selling drugs? Don't have to remember everything. Humera, made by Abby. And another one is Kitura, which is uh, made by Merck. Both are maps. So these are the two important drugs you have to remember. Just remember, top selling drug is Humera, and the next top selling drug is Kitura. Next. So let's look at the trend from 2018 to 2019. What is the market size? So in USD itself is 460 billion. So America itself is 460 billion. Now let's look at Europe. Europe is 196 billion market. Developed countries like Japan and, and China, they are all together put together 110 billion USD. And the rest is the emerging, emerging markets like China, Russia, India, and Bangladesh, which constitutes 211 billion USD dollars. So I have given a reference. So whenever you give a presentation, you must always have a link which will give you uh, the link which will prove that the, that the information that I'm giving you is authentic. So can we go to the next slide, please? So um, what it is now, I whenever I go to India, I always say collaborate, collaborate, collaborate. To, to hit the world market, you need to collaborate. 
you need to join hands with other companies. So can we look who has collaborated with who? We can see in number one, Bristol Myers Cliff has collaborated with Selji. There is some noise going on, uh, Vikram. Can you check what noise it is? Yeah, it just went away for some time. Okay. Uh, Hello. Hello. It's clear now. Now it's clear. Yeah. No. There. Uh, there is just sounds. Yeah. Heard, but it's because. Yeah, we don't have any sound. So can you put the slide on acquisition? I just want to show. It's the slide before that. Yeah. So um, acquisition. So look at, let's look at the acquisition. Bristol Myers Squibb has bought for $74 billion. So they have sort of bought that. This is number one acquisition. Number two acquisition is Avi with Allergan. Now, we you know Allergan is most famous for aesthetic drugs. So, and it is an Irish company. So where is Ireland, Ireland, and where is America? But they have collaborated. They have acquired totally the aesthetic division and entire Allergan. So this is number two acquisition. So if I were to forget about number three, four, five, so I just went to the last one, six, your Milan has collaborated with Abjon, the Pfizer division in India. So why do we need this collaboration? We need collaboration to strengthen other competitors. Because when, when you are together, you can fight, you can hit the computers, and you can rise up, and you can go forward. That is why I keep on saying, I keep on inviting you and please collaborate with us. That was my idea to show the collaboration. Can we go to the next slide? So, okay. So this is about Indian farm industry. You will see that 100 billion revenue of Indian pharmaceutical sector in the domestic is 100 billion. And also, export is also 20 billion. So it's not less, it's, it's a good number. This is your scenario of India. Can we go to the next slide? Okay. So as an, as as uh, part of this continent, we should know what the top industry is in uh, India. Number one is Sun Pharma. Then we have... Uh, Movies, then we have Dr. Reddy's. Just you can remember three. We know that Dr. Reddy's the pharma has, has uh, signed a deal with the Russian to try for the vaccine. For the vaccine. Um, so just remember these three. So can we go to the next slide? Okay. I wish it was more interactive. I wish the student would ask me questions about what is brand, what is generic, what is exclusivity. Now, just to give a brief uh, on that, let me say, so Integro Pharma, my company, my, uh, my company owned by me, my R&D has developed, uh, taken 12, 10 years, spent so much of money, time, energy to innovate one job. Now, I've innovated one job, but pharma industry itself, they have intelligence. 
other companies can take my innovation and start making it. So I need to protect myself. So when I need to protect myself, I need to be patent. And this patent is given by the trademark office of USPTO. So I have this patent. Now, if I were to keep this patent and protect my R&D lab, anybody, because if I make, say, a Trivastin sodium, some other company can break the patent and bring and make a Trivastin calcium. So to protect my thing, there is another terminology which is come up, which is called exclusively, which is given by FD. So this is my second layer of protection. By taking exclusivity, I am protecting my company is protect is being protected so that I can manipulate the market. I can I can ask for any price. Okay, so I have given you a brief example here. Uh, uh, Lipitor. So Lipitor was first launched in 1996, and in 2003 it got the best seller. Then. Now, the patent, it was patented till 2011, which means that nobody other than my company can make this. But once the patent is broken, other countries like India, Bangladesh can make Lipitor, right? But not any company in America can make Lipitor because they have the exclusivity. So that company will have the exclusivity till 23rd June 2020. And in the meantime, all companies, they kind of look when the exclusivity is going to expire. As soon as it expires, before that, they file for permission to make the drug. As soon as the 23rd of June process, on the 24th of June, all the companies who have applied to get the permission to make Lipitor. Mm -hmm. So what happens when it ha when the particular company takes exclusivity, it can manipulate the price. So it can take hundred dollars, but when the exclusivity expires, every company in every world is making that. So what happens? So the price of the drug falls. So that is important thing to remember: what is brand, what is generic. What is exclusive? Can we go to the next slide? Okay. So we know about the drugs. <clears throat> there are a lot of countries who have very stringent regulatory authorities. In, uh, in uh, USA, we know FDA. That is the Food and Drug Administration. In Canada, there is HSSC. Then in uh, US, uh, Europe, we have MHRA. Then in UK, we have National Institute of Health and Science. Likewise, in Europe, we have ENEA. Like uh, um, in Japan, we have MHLW, Ministry of Health, Labor and Welfare, so on and so forth. But if a drug is made in Bhutan or in Nepal or in Burma, we do not make a hue and cry because their reg drug regulatory authority is not as stringent as the ones I mentioned in my slide. So these, if these authorities sort of give you a go signal, that means you are, you are something, the drug has a value in the market, in the world market, and you have crossed you passed the door drug authorities. So these are the top drug authorities which we like to have these to be for. So can you go to the next slide, please? Okay, so <clears throat> this is an interesting thing. Now, if somebody says, oh, my drug is WHO approved, WHO is a non-governmental organization. I mean, it's not enforcing it, but the drug regulatory authority, which I mentioned in the previous slide, they are the government, they are enforcing, but non governmental organizations cannot enforce it. Even if you break the rule of WHO, nobody's going to catch you because these are non government organizations. 
So this you shouldn't be too happy. Oh, this is WHO approved. It is a non-government organization. It doesn't carry the much strength as a country's drug regulatory authority. So there are other non-government organizations. They are called PICS, PICS, ICH, USP, and BP, ISP. So I hope I'm clear on that, that your drug authority is more stringent than WHO. Because these are non-government organizations. Can we go to the next slide, please? So this is for everybody to see what Bangladesh, where is Bangladesh now in the current value. Our market size is 2.6 billion USD and our compound annual growth is 15.6%. And if we go to 5.11 billion by 2023, we Bangladeshis, we are 98% self-sufficient. Whereas, like Singapore, they are dependent 80% on their import, Malaysia 70%, Philippines 65%, Vietnam 60%. So, if we talk about manufacturer, we have 257 manufacturers in our country. Number of registered drugs is 29,486. And after the RMD sector, ready-made garment, we are the next uh, exchequer of contributing to our GDP, which is 1.83%. Our 80% drugs are generic and 20% drugs are patented drugs. So let us look at the key players of Bangladesh. There are top um, key players. We don't need to remember all of them. Just remember Square, Inceptor, Beximpo. Out of that Square and Beximpo, they are FDA approved. So, that's all you need to know from Bangladesh. They are top com 10 top companies, three top players. Next slide. Now, this is an interesting thing that Bangladesh is enjoying. The trade related aspect of intellectual property rights, which is called TRIP, in 2003, it was signed in Doha that 49 least developed countries they can manage taking drugs. So anything since we are least developed country, we can make it. Bangladesh falls into that. We can make that because our labor charge is low. And we can make it and we can export it. Bangladesh is the strongest base to manufacture pharmaceutical drugs. So our trips uh, will stay till 2033. But there is a big question mark because we are we are graduating from LDC to developing country. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed. I hope we can keep this waiver till 2033. Thank you. So next slide. So you can see the taking waiver. Okay. So now let me tell you the story of Remdesivir. Remdesivir is an investigational drug and it has gone to no test and has never been approved by the FDA. But looking at this pandemic, looking at the emergency, on the 1st of May 2020, FDA issues emergency use authorization of Remdesivir. So likewise, Bangladesh in Bangladesh, SKF and Bexinco have already started making Remdesivir. And uh, in May, um, Gilead has got the permission to make Remdesivir, but with no trials. On the other hand, it is a patent thing. On the other hand, good news for India that Jubilee Pharmaceutical has, has with Gilead to make this uh junior hasn't started making the jubilant has started making it so uh, all of the companies there are a few companies in india who have got this uh the permission to make remdesivir this is the first time india has broken a patent why because it is an emergency to the need of the hour patient needs it so when it is a Mobile crisis, anybody can break a patent. 
This is the story of them. Can we go to the next slide, please? Next slide, please. Okay, thank you. So there are some medicine price in Bangladesh, which are lowest in Bangladesh, which I want to show. Generic Sobus uh, uh, Bufir, Generic Harboni, and cholesterol. So uh, price-wise, we are still uh, you know, not as rich as any other developed country. That's why we still belong to LDC and graduating to developing countries. So our price is very, very less in terms of medicine. And I've given, uh, I've shown, which you don't need to remember, but just remember Bangladesh has the lowest cost of medicine. Next slide. Um, this is an example to show paracetamol tablet, which uh, 500 milligrams, price of this in Bangladesh is 0 0.009. In India, it is 0 0.014. In Bangladesh, is 0 0.059. In India is a little bit expensive, 0 0.070. In Bangladesh, your second tablet, 25 milligrams, is 0 0.047. And India, it is 0 0.049. So we are on the lower side of pricing our medicine because the government regulatory office, they kind of fix the price. So why this low? Because our operator cost per month, if I have to sort of uh, compare and contrast. Bangladesh is $142 per month of labor cost. India, slightly higher, $250. Then uh, a lab pharmacist with a pharmacist, initially to start with, his salary will be $236 in Bangladesh. $266. Labor costs are approximately 2 to 30% lower than India. So um, our drug price is very low. Next slide, please. So also our uh, utility cost is also low. Uh, I've taken an average uh, in terms of India. Uh, this is what I'm showing in Ahmedabad. Uh, our electricity cost is 0 0.089. In India, it's 0.11. And uh, the diesel cost is 0.77. In India, it's 0.81. Still, we are on the lower side. Next slide. So I have, here I've given an industry extracted information, country-wise, India, uh, there's a conversion. So where we stand in terms of conversion cost is also much cheaper in Bangladesh. Next slide. So even to make it in India, uh, in Bangladesh, to transport uh, is $800. In India, it's $900 from India to Europe. From Shanghai to Europe is thousand dollars. So even our supply or say to, to sort of uh, export it, even the cost is also very low. Can we come to the next slide? So what is the big difference? How is India so big? Indian farmer versus Bangladesh farmer. India has API factories means they have the raw material and with their raw material they can make their own finished product and most of the companies have us FDA and for us the only thing is we have a patent waiver that is why it is my earnest request again to only just know that i'm always always asking India to join hands, to collaborate with Bangladesh, because then we will be a strong force to fight against Europe and USA. Thank you, and I hope um, you benefited. You don't need to remember anything. It's just that I've given you a brief outline of the current scenario of the farmer world. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, ma'am, for your wonderful presentation. And uh, you have given an uh, enlightened of the world pharmaceutical industries. I hope that is uh, very much useful for the, all the audience who have joined this session and uh, enlightened for all the attendees. 
Also now, about we are Sama. to Sama. all Q and A. Yes, yes, exactly, ma'am. Now we are proceeding to our audience Q and A session. So let me ask one by one questions from our audience to you, and hope our audience will get the wonderful answers from your side. Uh, ma'am, first question from Sumalya Nahid. Would you please enlist the twenty percent patented drug? Well, I have not memorized it, but uh, I'm going to uh, tell you. In Bangladesh, we have eighty percent generic and twenty percent patent drugs. Yeah. So those twenty percent patent drugs, Humira, Humira is there. Ilya is there. Ilya, the uh, vitreal injection. Ilya is there. Then uh, uh, I think Kitu, Kitura, Kitura is also. Then Ozu Drex is also patented. So this is from Bangladeshi perspective. I'm talking. It's patented. Okay, okay. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, next question from Farhana. Uh, in the 2020-30, where do you see the Bangladesh pharmaceutical industries? I see huge collaboration with India. That's what I see. I can't see anything else beyond that. And APS in API synthesis, really want that. Also, artificial intelligence taking. Uh, you know um, what would you say? Uh, step by step, we are also utilizing artificial intelligence in R and D because uh, Integro has come up with this concept that, as you know, I always like to talk about artificial intelligence, and that is my choice of subject. So I want to see artificial intelligence being integrated in the health sector, in the pharma sector. I'm looking at joint collaboration with India. India only has one pharma in Bangladesh, that is Sun Pharma. So I want to see somebody collaborating with me. I see myself doing that. India should go global. Yes, exactly. Uh, Ma'am, next question from uh, uh, one another uh, audience, Rajul Kari. Uh, Ma'am, when the COVID nineteen vaccine will be released? Uh -huh, that's a that's a, anybody's good guess. It was supposed to come in September. Then I talked about the vaccine. Then it's supposed to come end of December. But if you ask me personally, I don't know. But I would like to think maybe middle of next year. Right. Anybody's guess. Anybody's guess. Um, yeah, um, and the excuses completed from the audience side. And I once again thank you for the accepting our invitation and uh, giving us an enlightening talk on the world pharmaceutical industries as a glance. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am, for joining with us and sharing your knowledge. Uh, and now today we are having one another speaker with us, Muhammad Abdul Motea from the University of Science Tech. Technology Chittong. He is currently working as a chairman of Department of Pharmacy at USTC Chittong. So uh, now I request to Dr. Abdul, uh, please continue your session on the discussion. I think some technical difficulties. Uh, I have sent the slide uh, to your email. Can you show? Here, I think uh, there is a difficulties to show the screen. Uh, sure, sir. Let me check, maybe. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you, uh, 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 esteemed CEO, uh, Dr. Jerin Dalwar uh, uh, I really enjoyed this session. It's about pharma market and about the present condition of pharma market in Bangladesh. It, uh, it was really uh, not received a PPT. Yes. Can you mail, mail me again? Yes.
So I have saved you one mail ID on your WhatsApp. Please send on that mail ID. Ma'am, uh, till now we are going with you, Dr. Zarin, ma'am. Uh, two questions from our uh, audience. Uh, one audience is asked about the uh, neuromorphic computing. Computing is possible in AI. So AI is the very favorite topic of Dr. Zarin Delawar Hussain. So till now, I would like to ask about AI and uh, neuromorphic computing in AI. Yes, uh, yes, AI. As I said. AI is taking over the pharmaceutical because of AI we are getting the vaccine so soon. Usually it takes so long to come out come out with a vaccine. So AI, AI is integrating with the pharmaceutical and uh, it should answer your question. Yes. Even the point of care, if I if, if I, I were to move from pharmaceutical and come to healthcare, even the point of care is you, your house. Because with, with with this pandemic, we have become so text. We are not uh, having that much of social contact. Telemedicine is taking over. And then um, in the next two, uh, three years, you will see that you will have a sensor uh, giving you all your data, your DNA structure, your metabolism, and everything is uh, stored in a server and your GP will know about it. And whenever they will see a rise in blood sugar, you will give your call and say, Zareen, look after yourself. I think your sugar is going a little high. So these are all because of AI. Likewise, in pharmaceutical, anything and everything beyond today's neomorphic computing, new algorithm approaches uh, with, uh, with the new technology. And it is the in thing now which will propagate uh, our pharmacy the pharmaceutical industry in the future. Yeah, thank you, ma'am. Uh, one another question from one more uh, audience, uh, Abhishek Kumar. He has asked about uh, in India uh, how we explore more generic medicines to reach everyone. Uh, you have to wait. You have to see. I mean, how we explore more generic. Okay. You have to wait till the patent expires. Other than that, you cannot go and make a generator. You have to wait till the, because you do not have that TRIPS waiver that we have, Bangladesh has. So you have to wait till your, the patent expires, yeah. and then you can go for the generator. Mm -hmm. So you, why don't you collaborate with us? We'll help you make it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, Brussel, have you sent me the PPT? Yes. Yes, I have already sent you uh, both the mail. Uh, let me check. Yes, I have received the mail. Sir, you can continue. Uh, sir, which PPT I have to play first? You have sent me two PPTs. No, uh, first one, not. Uh, second one, uh, it's a PDF form. No need to show the PDF form. Or you can uh, go with PPT only. OK, all right. Yes, sir, you can continue. I will share the Can I really like the question, uh, neuromorphic commuting, uh, uh, that, that uh, particular question. Uh, it relates the neural structure of the human brain. Uh, Ma'am, uh, ma your voice is cracking. Uh, the question about uh, neuromorphic commuting, uh, which is, uh, it, it utilizes the brain, I would call, uh, brain neurons. This immigrants synchronizing with the human brain. So I, I did not mention that, so I want to mention that now. I read about it, uh, but I haven't read. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Like Stephen Hawking's brain, 
you know, it's it's kind of uh, it falls into that category. Even how can see what neuromotor disorder like? Yeah, yeah, but he has, you know, he's a big name. He has uh, invented so many things. So it's 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 more or less like that. Yeah, thank you, ma'am, uh, for uh, your answers. And uh, now we are proceeding to our next speaker, Abdul, uh, Dr. Abdul. Uh, I request to Dr. Abdul, please continue the session. While, meanwhile, I am presenting your PPT. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Biko, and thank you to uh, Open Pharmacy Federation uh, to invite me in this session. And uh, I also thanks uh, again, again, my gratitude to uh, Dr. Jalin Dalwar Hussain. Only uh, due to uh, her uh, request, we, we, we have participated in this uh, renowned festival. Uh, and I, I, I believe this platform uh, will be a area will be an opportunity for farmers students uh, to gather knowledge, to share their knowledge, to share their new innovation, small innovation, and they will in future contribute in the farmer market. They will contribute in the farming industries. And we'll get better pharmacists through sharing the knowledge. Today, I I will uh, share uh, a piece of my research work. Uh, yeah, I have done with uh, uh, with uh, pharmaceutical technology uh, side. Now, please show the slide. Yes, sir, your slide is there. Okay, thank you. Uh, so here uh, I'm showing the development and evaluation of this nuclear floating microsphere. Uh, as I have already uh, introduced uh, by Mr. Bikram. So, so please, next slide. First of all, Floating drug delivery system. That is, uh, uh, yeah, when uh, a drug uh, has uh, poor absorption profile, then those drugs needs to stay in the stomach environment for a prolonged period of time so that it can it can release from the formulation for a prolonged period of time and uh, it cannot hamper the uh, fluctuation of drug concentration in the blood so from this concept fdds was designed and 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 we have seen that is different types of doses form have uh, designed uh, on the basis of fdds concept uh, tablet microsphere pillars uh, so many of those forms were uh, designed in fdds uh, uh, concept please next slide Okay, we have focused on microsphere. Microspheres are spherical particles having one to uh, around one to thousand micrometer, and uh, there are two types: microcapsule and micrometrix. Please, next slide. Here are the ideal characteristics based on which we have uh, chosen this. Uh, formulation uh, the ideal characteristics the ability uh, of the microsphere uh, reasonably high concentration chance of the drug stability its stability controlled particle size and uh, dispersibility in aqueous vehicle for injection 
A release of active reagent with a good control over a wide period of time, sustaining, su sustained action can be provided through this formulation. Uh, biocompatibility and uh, uh, that, that there may be uh, some susceptibility to chemical modification. So for this ideal characteristics, we have chosen this formulation. Next. Next, please. Okay, these are the types of microsphere. There are several types of microsphere. Uh, first one is the mucoadhesive microsphere, floating microsphere, radioactive microsphere, bioadhesive microsphere, magnetic microsphere, polymeric microsphere. Among them, we have chosen uh, floating microsphere because in our lab, we can do it uh, easily. And a student can do it with uh, 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 with available instrument in the laboratory, and is, is, uh, it is not that much costly for the students to do their uh, small scale research. This next slide. Okay, here, uh, <coughs> listen up, real. Uh, we have chosen the drug listen up, real for microsphere drug delivery system. Uh, it's, it's a AC in inhibitor. Uh, it is generally used for hypertension, uh, congestive heart failure patient, uh, even uh, also in preventing renal and retinal complication of diabetes. And we are focusing uh, on the, uh, on the uh, pharmacokinetic profile enrichment of lisinopril. And some studies uh, uh, have revealed that higher peak serum concentration and area under the curve in elderly patient, uh, elderly patient was shown. Uh, so uh, for this reason, uh, to enrich the pharmacokinetic profile of the lisinopril, uh, we, we, we have a form, form, formulated microsphere forms. This is the structure of lisinopril, you see. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, these are the materials required for lisinopril uh, microsphere. Uh, lisinopril is the active pharmaceutical ingredient. You dress it uh, RL100. Lisinopril was provided by the Vaccine Group Pharmaceutical Limited Bangladesh. And uh, HPMCK4 M, it has cellulose. Uh, acetone, spaniti, liquid paraffin, that method and, uh, and uh, required amount of distilled water is required for the formulation. Please, next slide. Okay, here are the model method of preparation. Uh, we have chosen a solvent evaporation method. Solvent evaporation method here, see in the right uh, picture. Uh, that is uh, the polymer and acetone is taken with the drug. Uh, the, then drug is given. And then uh, then we have uh, uh, kept it in 100 ml liquid paraffin with 1% span 80. And a stirrer with magnetic uh, uh, stirrer uh, that is around 1500 RPM uh, for uh, two and a half an hour to three hours. Uh, and then settle down uh, and then keep it for for half an hour or one hour to settle down then washing with uh, pat ether and then we have our desired product uh, microsphere desired product is microsphere like that okay, this is a simple process and in our laboratory we can uh, we can do it easily, and our bachelor and master's student can easily prepare the microsphere uh, in this way. Okay, please go for next slide. Okay, these are the major instruments which are used for microsphere formulation and evaluation. Uh, first one you see is a uh, propeller propeller used for microsphere preparation that it that is this is the uh, uh, rpm uh, uh, 
we can control RPM through this propeller and around 1500 RPM is used for uh, microspirit. It is very uh, difficult to maintain the time and RPM. Uh, so uh, we have to uh, we have to do uh, uh, 10 to 15 times to optimize the RPM and, and optimize the time because uh, the, uh, the target formulation and amount of formulation amount of microspray preparation depends on uh, uh, num number of RPM and time. And then after preparation, we go for uh, identification through FTIR and, uh, and scanning electron microscopy for, for its si size, shape, and drug entrapment and desolation test for its release profile. Okay, please go for next slide. This is the uh, formulation design. We have followed three square factorial design. And that is the so nine formulation was, was formed uh, uh, by the variation of polymers. And, and the drug was uh, fixed and polymer ratio was changed. And uh, nine, nine, uh, there are the nine batches of formulation were prepared. Uh, that is which batch can provide better uh, pharmacokinetic activity. Okay, after preparation, you see in the upper uh, three slide, uh, uh, I have given the microsphere prepared, microsphere here. And uh, the, the bar diagram uh, shows percent of yield that is on F7, F8, F2, these batch, batches, in case of these batches, we have more yield. And through IR spectrum, we have identified the lisinopril in the, in the final product. Okay, here is the, uh, you see the desolation and the floating microsphere is here. We are watching on, uh, Desolation apparatus. Uh, we have uh, given here the gastric fluid, uh, uh, and and uh, the floating microsphere is added. You see the floated uh, microsphere in the dissolution basket, and we have uh, find the uh, we have found the uh, dissolution rate and release uh, our release rate of lisinopril from the microsphere by this study. Okay, here is the scanning electron microscopy was done by uh, scanning electron microscopy. Uh, uh, here, uh, this study was done to have the uh, molecular uh, study. That is, uh, that is the the uh, core uh, particle size, shape, polymer arrangement, and drug and ent entrapment uh, in the microsphere. Here, first one I show the that is a spherical size of the microsphere. And second and third one shows the polymeric arrangement in the microsphere. And fourth one is the polymeric arrangement and drug entrapment of micro, drug entrapment in the microsphere. So we can, uh, we can um, uh, just justify the, especially the drug entrapment uh, of uh, the drug entrapment in the, in the micro, microsphere uh, through a scanning electron microscopy. Let's go for next slide. Okay, besides uh, STEM, uh, we can evaluate uh, uh, different parameters like buoyancy percentages, that is the floating property. Uh, percent drug entrapment efficiency, that is uh, how much drug entrapped in the microsphere, we can evaluate. And then, then we evaluate different kinetic properties like zero order and for zero order, first order, and he goes to model. And at the end of the dissolution rate, uh, uh, dissolution study, we have found that that is the release kinetics. So, uh, 
was followed the Higuchi model and uh, and and we, 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 we find good good release profile from the microsphere. Please go for next next slide. Okay, this way we can uh, prepare hallucinopril, a microsphere in, in a small scale laboratory process. And here you see we, uh, we have F2, F, F4, and F9, three batches which provide which uh, provide a uh, good result, especially dissolution data and the size shape and drug and treatment. And, and through this way, we can prepare uh, lisinopril, microsphere, uh, or those uh, drug have a poor absorption profile. We can go through the microsphere preparation through solvent evaporation process. And our, our next target is to uh, is to uh, 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 apply to animal model animal model that is the in vivo investigation uh, so that uh, we can find out the actual result uh, that is whether this microsphere will work or not. Okay, thank you. Okay, this is the total uh, procedure of microsphere preparation. Uh, that is, uh, this is very easy process and we can do it in our laboratory. And why I am em emphasizing on, on this uh, uh, very small scale preparation, because uh, if the student want to do research, that is their, their research require more money, more funds, uh, uh, which is difficult sometimes for them. So they do not worry that is i have to do the research with more money or more fund we can we can do some research with um, uh, very in, in in very economical way and and collaboration with others you see we have uh, here we have collaborated uh, with with our dhaka dhaka bcsir for scanning electron microscopy in such a way we can collaborate with the industry even we can uh, collaborate with India, uh, uh, dif 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 different industries in India, uh, so that the work will be uh, more uh, valuable in future. Okay, here I have added uh, some uh, snapshots uh, from my department. That is, uh, we are not only uh, involved in research work, we are also involved in some uh, co-curricular activities. Uh, first picture showed that is we have celebrated the World Pharmacy Day in 2019, uh, and here 2020 after three days we, we will again celebrate the uh, World Pharmacy uh, Day, and you have you have also program uh, on 25th. And second uh, one is the industrial uh, visit visit uh, of our Department of Pharmacy final year. Uh, they have visited the uh, the Large, largest industry of Bangladesh, Square Pharmaceutical Limited. And the third one uh, uh, is a sports day. And fourth one is the, uh, it was a nice program in our campus of Department of Pharmacy. It was the first uh, symposium held in uh, Department of Pharmacy of 2013. And five countries has come and uh, uh, we have a guest from Jadapur University, Mr. Bishujit, uh, uh, has come on this program. Okay, thank you. Thank you for patience. And thank you uh, to OPF Association and, uh, and, and uh, CEO of Integra uh, Pharmaceuticals and, and uh, other students and organizers, those are involved uh in doing this uh, uh auspicious programs okay thank you yeah if thank you so some... much sir for your <laughs> wonderful presentation on micro spheres and uh, you have enlightened uh, research on your micro spheres that is really helpful for all the researchers who are working in the pharmaceutics department or in uh, drug discovery and uh, 
uh, floating uh, drug delivery, especially you have enlightened the floating drug delivery system for all the students who are especially working in the pharmaceutics and working on the drug delivery system and new advancement in the drug delivery. That is the really wonderful session for all the uh, attendees who are attending from the overall globe. Thank you so much, sir. Now we are the session is open for the Q and A session. Uh, audience can drop their question in comment box so we can rise to our uh, speakers. So any kind of questions if you are having, so we can rise to our speakers. Uh, one questions arise for Dr. Jareen. Are you intended to implement <laughs> implement artificial intelligence in healthcare? Yes. I mean, um, are you uh, intended to be? It's already implemented. It's already going on in the world uh, because uh, uh, what do you think about telemedicine? It's artificial intelligence. Then uh, you, what do we have now? Uh, now we have a uh, um, stethoscope which can sort of uh, make you hear your heartbeat and also do an ECG. So that is also a part of artificial intelligence. Then sometimes uh, there are methods, there are a lot of people who have done their own DNA study, whole molecular study, then their um, metabolic study, so that when they are sick, they don't have to go and hear all this from the doctor. Because you are aware of your entire system and you can partner with your doctor or your GP and together you can sort of um, uh, you know, uh, partner and take the medicine from the doctor. So this is already been being done. It is it's already there. We are thinking about more advanced because due, due to this pandemic, uh, telemedicine has taken uh, uh, taken a, a huge market, and a lot of people are buying these uh, webinars and stuff like that. So all these are artificial intelligence. So in health system, it is more than pharmaceutical. I would say. Thank you. Did, I hope I answered your question. It is already there in healthcare. It's more than pharmaceuticals. Yes, thank you, ma'am, for no, enlightening the knowledge of our questions. Uh, next question from the Dr. Abdul. Uh, so, yes. uh, can you explain the uh, SAR of the activities that molecule you have shared in the uh, your presentation? Structure. Uh, I have one interesting question. Uh, a structure activity relationship. Uh, Dr. Abdul, can you uh, say some uh, uh, structure activity relationship of that compound? Okay, compound. structure activity relationship. This compound actually, uh, the ACE inhibitor, the angiotensin uh, converting enzyme inhibitor, and it has, you know, that is uh, amino group, amino group and benzene ring, and these are actually uh, interact with the with the receptor site. Uh, receptor are made up of protein we know and they have amino amino group and carboxylic group and and they can link with with this group and we know that is the more uh, they they can link up with the uh, 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 that is compound uh, that is the more binding will more there will be more pharma pharma pharmacological activity so this is the uh, actually uh, the SAR of the that is uh, the pharmacophoric region in the structure will increase the uh, uh, receptor drug interaction. Because the question is actually SAR, it's a vast question that is every uh, that is the whole the pharmacophoric region uh, that every pharmacophoric region yeah. has the interaction with the. Uh, 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 that is receptor, uh, which will uh, increase the uh, activity of the drug actually. And the, if the activity of the drug increase, increase the 
acceptance of the drug also be increased. So, yeah, okay, thank you, sir. And uh, especially thank you to Dr. Jain Dilawar Hussain and uh, Dr. Abdul for invitation to join as a speaker for the CAC 2 of technical. And in enlightening your knowledge to our audience. Uh, we are very grateful to hear you on this platform and uh, hope all the attendees who have joined the sessions, they have learned a lot of things from you. And this session is very helpful for everyone. Thank you so much, ma'am and sir, for joining with us and sharing your wonderful knowledge. Again, thank you. Thanks so much. Thank Dikna. you. Thank you for uh, Thank you, Mutale. Thank you, Madam. Thank you. Thanks nice. for you. Okay, Allah. One uh, important announcement for all the uh, attendees, the result for EQUIS phase one has been announced by today 7 p.m. So today 7 p.m. we will be announced the result of phase one of EQUIS and those candidates get ready for the phase second of EQUIS competition. All the winners will be announced by today 7 p.m. And the final results of Pharma Nasia 2.E announced by Dr. Zarin Delawar Hussain on 25th September on the occasion of World Pharmacist Day. The scheduled time for 25th September is 4.30 as per Indian time and 5 o'clock as per the Bangladesh time. And Dr. Zarin Delawar Hussain is the guest of honor for our validity function along with the uh, Vice Chancellor of uh, University of Science and Technology, Pitgong, will be there with Dr. Zareen Delawar Hussain in the validity function. So, we are very excited to hear Dr. Zareen Delawar Hussain in the validity function. All the winners of the whole Pharma Nasia 2.e competitions and mm -hmm. all the winners we will be announced in the validity function. So, we are excited to hear all the winners. Uh, all the three competitions already covered and today is the last date for the e-blog submission. All the attendees are requested to submit your e-blog before 11.59 p.m. Start 11.59 p.m. The submission form will be closed. So request to all the candidates to submit your e-blog and get ready for the excited results on the World Pharmacist Day. Thank you, everyone, and a special thanks to Dr. Jareen Delawar Hussain for joining our invitation and uh, you, uh, joining the sessions. Pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, yeah, thank, thank, thank you so much. much.